I want to expose to you the number one most dangerous yet most common, as you're about to see in a minute, health food ingredient in the world. This ingredient, touted as being very healthy, is one of the fastest growing used ingredients in health foods, referring to supplements, referring to powders, referring to drinks and health foods that you're commonly buying, might even be in your cupboard. We're going to break it down. And it's not what you think. It's not a health food at all once you realize it and you see it. And I hope I can expose that for you today. And I believe just from the research that you're going to see, I'm going to try to make this as simple as I can in the beginning to help you to understand the ingredient, kind of background on it, how it came to be. And then I want to get a bit into the studies because I think they'll shock you. Once you see what I've seen, you see that they're worse than sugars. They're worse than carbohydrates or even worse than the recently banned red dyes that we have on the body because of its prevalence in our food. Most people view this food as a diet food when in fact the FDA has just recent in last two years admitted that it doesn't aid in getting to a healthy weight. And in fact, this food, when it's an ingredient in your food, actually makes you eat more. And in one test, researchers out of North Carolina State exposed human intestinal tissue to this ingredient. And then they found that it increased the activation of your genes. It altered the DNA and created inflammation, oxidative stress, and cancer in the tissue that they checked. And this was human tissue. It breaks your DNA. That's why I'm getting more and more concerned with it. So I'll show you the extremely common but not so obvious foods that it is in. We're going to go through some labels so I can actually help you to spot this, maybe do a cupboard check later today, and we're going to be able to equip you to do that. So what is this health food? It's called substituted chlorinated disaccharide. Now that's a mouthful, substituted chlorinated disaccharide. Now I want to break this down and give you this backstory on it as simple as I can. And the, the research is going to shock you as far as what this is doing and the fact that it's the fastest growing health food trick in the world, literally this year, it surpassed and became one of the number ones. Then I want to give you the solution to how to spot it, like I said, and then remove it. If it is built up, if you have been eating this, how do you neutralize this ingredient? Substituted chlorinated disaccharide was invented by accident. In 1975, the laboratory assistant at the time understood the test to be a taste test. The powder was an insecticide that was to be tested with chemicals or in different means, chemistry-wise, not taste tested. So the laboratory assistant found out it's an insecticide. He was okay. Relayed the information of the findings of, it was pretty sweet. After discovering the sweet taste, they said, hmm, we're onto something here. And they, although it was under consideration as an insecticide, the team continued scientific work on it. They researched it. They filed for a patent in 1976, and they received their full protection and patent for this new powdered ingredient that in fact wasn't going to be used as an insecticide. It was going to be used in your food. Substituted chlorinated disaccharide was the powder, but it wasn't going to work for the marketing name. So a company of Tate and Lyle that helped to invent it invented a new name, not based on science, but based on on marketing, substituted chlorinated disaccharide, and they decided to make the marketing claim on it, and the name was born sucralose. In its first decade on the market, McNeil Nutritionals, which was then a subsidiary of Johnson & Johnson, has some very questionable things in their past. They marketed sucralose under the brand name Splenda as made from sugar, so it tastes like sugar. Now, thank God several regulatory agencies deemed that to be deceptive advertising, and you're about to see in a little bit that it is very far off from anything close to sugar. And in fact, this is one of the fastest growing sugar alternatives in the world. It's artificial, it's synthetic, and I want to show you exactly why it's dangerous. It's sucralose is known as E95. It's known as E95 in the European Union. It is synthesized by chlorinating sugar molecules by substituting hydroxyl groups 
on the sugar molecules with chlorine. So here's the chemical process of it. They take sucrose, they're going to chop this one, they're going to chop this one, they're going to chop this one. They're gonna use a whole bunch of chemical reactions, all of these. It's gonna take 10 to 12 chemical reactions and they're going to get this molecule, which has a similar shape and has chlorine on it. And there's your official really long biochemistry name. I gave you the abbreviated one early here, but it's technically this. Then they shortened it to the substituted version and then all the way down to sucralose. Now, the problem is that chlorine reacts with organic material to create chlorination byproducts. Those matter greatly. When you mix too much chlorine, that shouldn't be there. Chlorine is a naturally occurring mineral that our body does need some of. When you mix it in with a sugar like that, you're making a chlorine byproduct can trigger symptoms like fatigue, headaches, brain fog, reproductive system issues, and immune-related problems. So you will not see that kind of issue with other sweeteners like stevia or monk fruit. And the reason for that is those are made from plants, stevia and monk fruit. Stevia leaf, you could grow your own and then just crush it down to a sweetener. You could take the fruit, monk fruit, and you could whittle it down and have the sugar alternative. So those, you will not see it in. But when it comes from a plant, you're okay. But when there's these artificial ingredients that are made in a plant, that's where these are beginning to raise more and more questions. Also along the lines is aspartame has now been given given the actual label of a carcinogen, but sucralose has just passed aspartame as the most used sugar alternative artificially in the world, especially in the United States. It accounts for 28% of the $1.2 billion global high potency sweetener market. It's the fastest growing, it's growing at 10% rate, and it is showing up in a shocking amount of health foods. It is in nearly 4,000 food and beverage healthcare products, including diet drinks, ice creams, protein bars, vitamins, toothpaste. It can be found in gum. It can be found in over-the-counter medications, salad dressings. Consumer use of sucralose has grown by 10% each year. 70% of those who consume sucralose, also known as Splenda, will have a sensitivity to it. Seven out of 10. And seven out of 10 people will develop symptoms because of this ingredient. And seven out of 10 women in America use sucralose daily. So a study from researchers suggests that a chemical formed from one artificial sweetener might also damage our DNA. That is sucralose and the zero calorie sweetener that we use all the time. It's 600 times sweeter than table sugar. The World Health Organization recently recommended against using certain sugar substitutes to help lose weight, including sucralose, saying there's little evidence that it actually works. So why are so many women and men consuming this? In addition to the DNA damage that we talked about, the new study found that sucralose may lead to a leaky gut lining and it increases the activity of the genes related to inflammation and cancer. The findings from the studies raise the health and safety concern around this thing, and I want to start blowing the whistle on it, because that was found in the Journal of Toxicology and Environmental Health, and it takes a while for these things to catch up. I want to put you ahead of the game. Now, why are we eating so much of it? We think it is a weight loss alternative. And so the FDA is now saying it actually isn't helping, and what we're finding is it makes you more healthy. Several research studies were done showing that people that use sucralose actually ate more calories, because sucralose tends to pass through the system, but it still has to be detoxified. Now, regulatory approval of sucralose is based on studies that assume that it passes through the body unchanged. Like it just passes right through you. So it's low calorie. It doesn't have any calories and it can just go right through and then you just eat sweet things, but it doesn't do anything to the body. But that's not the case. The authors of the study pointed to earlier research showing that certain gut bacteria grab a hold of the sucralose. So your gut activates the sucralose and turns it into what's called sucralose 6 acetate. So it's the ingredient that gets produced in your body because of eating this ingredient. That's what makes it really tricky because you'll see sucralose on the label 
but it's part of the byproduct that is made in your gut that starts to become the big problem. Sucralose 6-acetate, when the body is exposed to it, breaks the DNA. That's what creates the inflammation, oxidative stress, and cancers. Now, regulatory agencies such as the European Food Safety Authority set maximum levels of sucralose 6-acetate that can be allowed in food products. So Splenda responds with, oh, no, 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 ours doesn't have sucralose 6-acetate in it. We test that. We make sure it is just the normal form of sucralose. It has not gone through a chemical activity. Yeah, your own gut does that. So this is where it becomes the hard part is once it's put into your body, it gets activated into an even more damaging material. Now, acetate is also really hard on the liver. So I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Now, the amount of the chemical in a single serving of sucralose containing beverage could be high enough to potentially damage the DNA. That's what the study found. On the study on humans proved that just 45 milligrams per day over a 10-week period of time created the damage. So I thought to myself, I wonder how much is actually in, let's look at an example, of an energy drink. Very popular one. There's sucralose right on the label. This is the number one selling one currently while I'm filming this video. So you want to check every single one of your energy drinks to find out if it has this ingredient label. And so I looked at, okay, there's sucralose. It's midway down on the ingredient list. So this energy drink is going to give you this extremely toxic chemical. How much is in there? How much sugar you would have to put in to this energy drink that I just showed you in order to get the sweetness that is in this energy drink. So you have to have an entire quarter of a cup of sugar in order to accomplish that. Well, they figured out that you only need to add just a fraction of a teaspoon of sucralose to equal this much sugar. That's the impact difference of how much sucralose would be this sweet. It's 600 times sweeter. The study showed that if you just eat this much, just that little bit, you will have in a 10 week period of time, damage to your gut lining, inflammation, and potential DNA damage leading and connections to cancers. 100 milligrams is in the top energy drink in the world. 45 milligrams is all it takes for a 10 week period of time. So 10 weeks of usage leads to that. So I thought that demonstration was powerful because we're putting so much of this in our body two times more. That's if you drink one energy drink per day. Here's where it gets worse. How it steals from the detoxification power of the liver. They did a study where they looked at when sucralose gets into your liver, you're eating it from energy drinks and some of the other foods that we're gonna show you in a little bit. It gets into the bloodstream, it passes to the liver. The liver has to filter out a couple hundred gallons of blood every single day for you. When it gets into the liver, there are substrates, chemicals that are built up. Chemicals from what we breathe, from medications, some of the worst, toxic compounds. You're coming in contact with these all day long. What they found is that when when the sucralose gets into the liver to be detoxed out of the body, it gets preferential treatment from the proteins that are responsible for removing toxins from the liver and getting it to the digestive tract, meaning they have the fast pass to get out of the body and be detoxified first. Now, why does this matter? Because that means if you consistently eat sucralose, your body is prioritizing, giving its energy, giving its allotment of the amount of seats it has on the detox bus that day to sucralose first, leaving behind every other form of toxicity like medications, like alcohol, like chemicals from the air. So the liver is getting more toxic, not just from the sucralose in the gut or creating inflammation or from your DNA, but because the liver is being prioritized by sucralose to eliminate it first. That was shocking to me. It's literally tricking the liver to get it out of the body first, get its free ride and leaving behind other destroyers. So this toxin, why I call it the most dangerous is because itself damages gut lining, inflammation and DNA, but it also makes all the other toxins worse. So how do you know if you've had too much of this, if you got it into your body, if you're dealing with sucralose toxicities, Sucralose can cause one to suffer from sluggishness, fatigue, can make your legs feel like lead weights, mood changes, cramping, especially females, severe cramping, especially during your cycle. 
intense or sharp shooting pain, painful bowel movements, bloating, flatulence, dizziness, confusion, These sort of unexplained symptoms, also unexplained tiredness, the cramping bloating side of things, joint pains, headaches, diarrhea, all tied back to this. So if you're suffering with those, it's such an easy check to say, Am I getting sucralose? So now that you know about sucralose and why it's so bad, and you know what some of the symptoms are, let's talk about what we can do about it. If you've consumed it, if you've been consuming it, if you have a family member that's consuming it, it's time to counteract it and how we begin to recover from this damage. Well, step number one is going to be eliminating it from your diet. Two weeks off of sucralose and your body can begin to respond. Well, what is it in? Well, we talked about all the energy drinks. Touting themselves as health drinks, by the way, yet they are very far from it. That's, I will always call out. But what about your creamers? If you are getting a light drink, a sugar-free drink, a low sugar, low calorie drink at a coffee shop or at home, you better look for sucralose as I almost guarantee it's in there. Hot chocolates, let's get the light version for the kids. Sucralose and Ace K, I will add, let alone artificial flavors. But Ace K is the other counterpart of an artificial. I'm gonna get some cranberries, 50% less sugar. Every time it says less sugar, you wanna look is there an artificial sweetener in there? What about Gatorade? Low calorie. This stuff in the front jumps off the label at me to say something's going on there. As soon as you flip it over, sucralose and Ace K. Your orange juice. It's the light version. Sucralose and Ace K. Your fruit. There it is. Sucralose. Why are you putting sucralose in our peaches? Different type of fitness and health food drinks. Sucralose. And again, Ace K. Oatmeal. One of the most common questions I get about health foods. There it is. Sucralose. Lower sugar, sucralose. That's how you can start to spot some of these very common, almost every food I went through there, if you ask people, would be considered a health food. Something people are using for recovery of a workout, for some kind of healthy drink. They think they're just eating fruit. They think they're just eating oatmeal. They're trying to do something healthy, healthier foods, yet extremely toxic. So those things have to go to sort of do a flush of the system. We've got to cut off the source and avoid those foods. Number two, we want to counteract the toxin by increasing natural sources of glutathione and its building blocks. Glutathione is the street sweeper of the body. Three amino acids that you need to get a lot of. So the reason why NAC, NAC, is super popular because that's a form of cysteine. Cysteine would be like the parent and N-acetylcysteine would be like the child. It's a byproduct of it. So eating more cysteine eating more glutamic acid, eating more glycine. These are going to be the three that help build glutathione. Your body needs to build it itself. My favorite foods to do this with, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale, bok choy, Brussels sprouts. They have sulforaphane, which can help increase glutathione levels in the body. Another one of my favorite foods that increases glutathione and these building blocks are avocados. Avocados, healthy fats, but they also contain glutathione. Turmeric. Turmeric specifically increases glutathione in the liver cells. So I love that fact, which leads me to the number three thing we need to do, which is eliminate this food, add foods that help boost glutathione to combat against sucralose and other chemicals. And number three, cleanse the liver. Sucralose has a half-life of around two weeks in the body, sometimes as short as five days. So your system can eliminate it quickly. But remember, it's going to be prioritized to get rid of quickly, but it's going to leave behind a lot of other chemicals because it took the seat on the bus and it shoved other people out so they couldn't get out of your liver. So we've got to follow that. So following a specific liver food eating plan can help assist the liver. And then we want to support with the glutathione, with the building blocks of glutathione, with nutrients like milk thistle, with nutrients like lemon water powder and load up the liver so it can do phase one of wrapping up these chemicals, phase two, isolating them with fats, and phase three, getting them out of your body. That's called phase one and two detoxification pathways of the liver. And those specific nutrients and more help to do exactly that. So my recommendation, if you have not done one or have not done one recently, take the liver cleanse so that your liver can do the proper phase one, phase two, and get an entire flush. And of course, stop eating so much sucralose. 100 million people have a fatty or toxic liver. It's the fastest growing condition in the world. And by 2050, there will be 55% of the world's population with a fatty liver. We need to detox it. When your organ that detoxes you is toxic, every other organ is toxic. 
So all boats are going to get worse instead of rise when the liver is not doing well. So to learn that food plan, watch this next video on how you can turn it around in two weeks and check out the link for the liver cleanse challenge below to help with sucralose, the most dangerous ingredient from a health ingredient perspective in the world, we can do better. Check this next video out.